The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Well, the first order of business is to report on my little grandson. Uh, he's out of danger right now. He has spiral meningitis, but he's doing a lot better. Today's his one-month birthday, and it's also his mom's birthday. So, um, you know, the family's a re sigh of relief, at least temporarily. But uh, it's been a pretty rough uh, three or four days with the little guy. But, uh, you know, things have been... A lot worse in the world. As a matter of fact, is if we can remember today, on the September 11th, you know, of 2001, what happened. Uh, it was very, very sad. I remember that day so vividly uh, because it was uh, it was it was quarter to eight in the morning. Excuse me, <laughs> it was 8:45 um, um, New York time. And after the plane hit, Arch Crawford, uh, who's my neighbor here. Uh, called me up about 10 minutes later, and we were chatting, and uh, I was short the S&P, and I had a chance to short some more because the market didn't close uh, for another 35 or 40 minutes until there was a um, – until uh, the uh, – plane hit the uh, the Pentagon and I was on the phone with Arch and Arch told me uh, and this was this was a good five or ten minutes before it was ever reported on the news he said the Pentagon's just been hit and I and I said how do you know he said I'm talking to somebody that's in the building he said one of my customers he said he's on the other line and uh, I said okay and so I you know hung up and anyway just a few minutes later I don't know the exact time it was uh, it was reported, you know, that the Pentagon was hit. For, unfortunately, and this is my opinion, I, I don't think the next terrorist attack is going to be anything like that. I think it's going to come from the Internet, and I think they're going to try to shut down the financial system and all the computers that run all the cash registers and all the other stuff, the traffic lights. I, that's where I think the real problem lies. I have uh, I have not had as many computer problems in this past month as I've had in all the previous years that I can remember, and I have some really smart professional people that are running my stuff. So it's uh, it's very very frustrating when you see that. But that's where I think it's going to happen. And if you can stop and think, what would happen if they shut down the computers for you know 24 hours, 36 hours, two weeks, whatever it happens to be, you know that would really be uh, you know a terrible shock. And I think those crimes are just as bad as. You know, some of the other crimes that take lives because, you know, lives are affected by by these things. You know, companies that are just barely hanging on that get hit by something like that go under, you know, when things like this occur. So I'm going to get off my soapbox now and uh, get back on the soapbox for just a minute and talk about the Dow Jones because we've had some changes. Uh, they've taken out three stocks out of the Dow Jones and they put in three new stocks. They do this all the time. And that's why the Dow Jones is not a very good... Uh, indicator of what the stock market is. It's only 30 stocks, and they're price-weighted. They're not capitalization-weighted. In other words, they don't take the total value of all the stock shares and everything. They just take the value of the stock. So the price of IBM you know, has a higher weight than the price of Hewlett-Packard. And so what they do is they take out Euler Packard and they put in Goldman Sachs. So, you know, they play with the index all the time. The Dow Jones family, uh, I don't think they've done a very good job, uh, you know, managing uh, the financial information. But that's just my personal opinion again, and I will shut up and not talk about it anymore. Um, the thing that I would like to remind everybody is on the TFNN, you know, the contest that we've got going, if you're in the contest, try to put a, one, at least one or two trades on every day because you've got a chance to make some money. And also, you know, use your methodology and prove to yourself that what you're looking at is uh, – you know, it's working. That's the you know that's the basis of you know what we're supposed to do with this. But when you have a when you have a contest like this, you really and if you joined it, you ought to you put some trades on, no matter what it happens to be. Now, I, I wanted to start the program today with the with the stock of Apple. Um, this goes back a, a long time, uh, way back to 2005, and there there are basically four A B C D patterns there that occurred. Uh, the first one was in July of 2006. We had another one at the 
the bottom, uh, the financial crisis of March of uh, 2009. Uh, then we had another one in uh, July of 2011. This is where we have the ABCD patterns, you know, the Thunderbolt patterns. And then, of course, we had the really big one uh, that occurred here at the 385 level, uh, which was the long-term one that we're watching. Now, we have... Um, uh, the market rallied, you know, since that time. We rallied over the past five months. We've rallied up to the exact 50% um, uh, level of the, of, the, of the down move, which is really, excuse me, that's a mistake. It's a 38% it's a uh, move on the downside. I, unfortunately, I've been up for, uh, I have had very little sleep uh, just uh, because of the families in Philadelphia, and I'm here in Tucson, so I've been on the phone with them all the time, and so uh, my... Uh, my my facility's not always good, but today they're probably a little less than uh, the little less than normal. But uh, it is a 38% retracement uh, that we had going back at the 505 level uh, in the uh, in the Apple stock. But the, the, one of the reasons why I'm talking about Apple, I know it's in the news and everybody talks about it, and there you know everybody thinks that there's going to be uh, 1.2 billion. Uh, Chinese people buying, uh, you know, the Apple iPhones. Well, first of all, they have their own iPhones over there. And the second thing is, is the average, you know, wage over there is about $8 a day. And uh, even though everyone has a cell phone, it still is not a uh, a very good uh, uh, thing that you think that they're going to be able to pay $500 or whatever they're going to charge for them over there. You'll just... Uh, you know, you'll just have to wait and see. But what what I wanted to do uh, with Apple is to show you, you know, the patterns that occur in Apple because they, they hit some of these numbers just absolutely incredible. And uh, I'm going to post into the Tiger Den the 60-minute uh, chart in Apple going back over the last three weeks. And you can see that there were several beautiful Gartley patterns after we hit that that 512 uh, uh, level, which was the 382 retracement. And, of course, yesterday, you know, we had the one that, that occurred uh, up at the 507 level, and that was with, the, you know, the really bullish news that they have two new products and all this stuff, and the market would not react to that good news, and it broke very badly. And then, of course, uh, today, you know, everyone realizes that something's not right, and they gap the stock down, you know, $20. So uh, all I'm saying is is that, you know, when you're listening to the fundamentals or listening to the news, take a look at the charts. Because many times the charts will be telling a different story from what they're telling you uh, in the news. That's, uh, you know, the bottom line of what we're looking at when we're watching some of these things. So we will do my best here to get these charts working. Uh, unfortunately, I have... Uh, um, made a mistake on the rebooting because I've had some uh, uh, outages here with the rain we had last night and I, I, I lost a little bit of data and some of the stuff that I usually have up is not uh, running exactly the way that it should be but it's secondary to what's been going on so you know I'll just do my best today to muddle through this and try to give you some good information we do have a uh, we do have a very interesting uh, trade situation coming up right now um, it is uh, it is in the uh, it is in the euro, and I will try to get this one into the uh, into the room here and see if we can uh, you know get uh, get back in here and take a look at it. Anyway, we've been talking about this one two three four five uh, expanding uh, triangle, also known as the reverse point wave. This was uh, the T six pattern in Gartley's book. And we had the break, and it came down to the 50% retracement, down around the uh, the 131 level. And then right now, the market is rallying back to a 61% retracement of 0.5. And that came in at 133.15. And so uh, this is where, if the market is going to have a reaction, this is probably where you want to be watching the euro to start to move to the downside. Uh, when you look at the dollar index, the dollar index is pulling down to a 61% retracement of the last little move that we've had. Uh, that number comes in right around that uh, 81.50 level that we hit a little bit earlier in the day. So the uh, euro right now is at a very, very critical level at this uh, 133.15 uh, level that it hit uh, earlier in the morning. So, uh, and the euro is, you know, 53% of the dollar index, so a lot of these things, you know, are following along. We've had the same type of a move in the Japanese yen versus the U.S. dollar, and also the same type of move in the British pound. The British pound 
you know, got up to the area of 158, and, you know, we've been saying that 157.50 is a, a pretty significant point in that uh, in the British pound. So this is going to be a very interesting day here because if the market is, uh, you know, really strong, the euro is going to get above 134, and then, uh, you know, the dollar could be under tremendous pressure, uh, especially if we get below 81 in the dollar index. But whether it does that or not, you know, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to be, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But that's the trade that I'm watching for today is uh, selling the euro up at this 133.12 uh, to 133.15 level. And uh, we will see if it's got the, the courage to uh, move to the downside. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, with the stock indices, uh, we're also approaching, uh, we're at a very, very critical level in the stock indices. Uh, I believe uh, we are, um, uh, the number that I've been watching for today, if I can get this to work, uh, will come in at the um, 130, excuse me, <laughs> at the 1687, uh, 50 to 1688 level. That's the 786 retracement of the high we made. Uh, back on the new moon of, in August, and uh, so we're we're very 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 close to that, you know, uh, to that level. Uh, we're not too far away. We're only about uh, oh three or four points away in that level. So that's the that's the level that I'm watching uh, in the uh, you know the S and P. Whether that's going to be a major top or not, I don't know. But there's a it's a perfect Gartley pattern because you have an A B C D forming from uh, you know early September to uh, three days ago when we pulled back to the 1639 level, which was a perfect 61% retracement. And now we're making a, you know, 786 expansion, you know, to the upside. So that's, uh, you know, that's basically what I'm looking at. Uh, I am um, using the nearest futures in the S&P, which is sep still September for me. They don't roll over, I believe, until this Thursday. And so that's why I'm still using the September. Uh, December rolls over, I believe, on Thursday. And, and it's really easy to make that transition is you just, you know, to see the difference between the two contracts and then do the chart and, you know, you should be should be okay. What I do on trading days like that when we come into the, well, well the triple witching stuff, but when we come into the uh, the quarterly uh, days, uh, when we have June, September, December, and March, what I do is I, I chart them both for a couple of days until the uh, arbitrageurs are moving over and that's it, you know. So that's it. See, tomorrow is a rollover day uh, in the um, in the S and P. I think it's at the close tomorrow. They go from September to December, and they do the same thing, uh, you know, in the currencies uh, at the uh, CME. So I think that's important. Tomorrow we're going to have uh, Rich Anderson on uh, because we've got a lot of things happening in the commodity markets uh, with corn, wheat, and soybeans. And Rich is going to be on uh, to talk to us about this. And there's a report due tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. Central Time. So we will be, uh, we'll be talking about that also. But uh, and then they've, made, they've changed the rules on how the orders are executed, which is not a good thing in my opinion. Okay, we've got to take a break here. If you have any questions, 877-927-6648. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. 
You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're, we're back, folks, and I had a request to uh, blow up the chart of the Apple 60-minute to show the Gartley patterns that formed over the last several days uh, with the lower highs. And uh, I put that in there, and it shows the big gap down with the market gap down twenty-some dollars uh, in the Apple stock, uh, you know, today. So uh, it was not unexpected if you were, you know, looking at it on a technical basis. And you know, that's why I'm a technician. I basically uh, just don't, uh, you know, follow anything other than the, uh, you know, the charts because that's the sum total of all the buyers and sellers that I see happening. Uh, we have another market that is uh, really fighting for its life on the bullish side, and that is the gold market. Uh, we've taken out uh, the lows of the last several days uh, down around the uh, 1650, excuse me, <laughs> these numbers, 13, uh, around the 1356 level. We've done that, but the market has not rallied very much. Uh, since that time, and I, I still think we have a really strong probability to see gold get down to the uh, 1320 uh, to 1340 level. Uh, that's where I would really like to be, uh, you know, looking to be a buyer uh, in the gold. I uh, hopefully I'll be able to put the. Uh, I'm having some trouble with the charts this morning, folks. So if you'll have to bear with me, and uh, you know, there's nothing I can do right now, but I will try to get it fixed a little bit later. Uh, 
But I'm showing the daily chart in gold right now. We made that big ABCD up there at that 1435 level. The actual high was 1434, and now we're making a, uh, a retracement in this area of 1362. The thing that uh, we're looking at is uh, that it is very similar to the last correction that we had uh, that went from July 22nd into uh, August the 6th. So uh, we're with just in a few dollars of that. And we didn't break down badly once we went below the 16. Uh, <laughs> the 1350, the 1350, 1357 level. That's it. Folks, if you think this talking is bad, you should try to trade through the middle of the night when you've got other things on your mind. And, and the trading keeps me uh, alive. And I have made, uh, I, I, fortunately, I'm trading a very small size just to keep myself, uh, you know, focused on, uh, you know, what's really important in life. But I have made, I think, three errors in the last three days, uh, two of them in my favor, one against me. And it, it's just really when I look at it, I said, you know, I've got to take a break. So uh, after after today's show today, I am taking the rest of the day off. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow because I'm really looking forward to the to the commodity show because we've got some, you know, really important things happening, uh, you know, in the market that I think are that I think are important. Now I wanted to. I want. Oh dear! I've got to change all of these. Uh, oh dear! Give me a second. I have to take out all of these uh, numbers that I have here. I wanted to show the uh, the, the uh, gold on a little bit shorter time frame, uh, looking at the 60-minute chart, because you'll be able to see that there's a really strong probability that we're going to come down and make this. Uh, Fibonacci retracement down here at the 1336 level. That's the level that I'm watching very, very closely. And I think we've got a really good chance of making that because we have a lot of ABCD patterns uh, that are forming at that time. There's uh, at least three or four that come in right at the same level. And that's uh, the ideal situation if we do, in fact, get that. And the fact that gold is not rallying very much, you know, given the fact that, uh, you know, the rest of the uh, uh, markets are moving, and the other thing is, you know, copper is getting hit again too. You know, it went up to that, you know, that 13, uh, excuse me, three dollar and forty cents per pound level uh, last week, which was the long term 61 percent re retracement, and we had a, uh, you know, it's it's broken well over 14 cents a pound, but you know, it's been so weak compared to the rest of the market anyway, it's not much of a surprise. But the the number that I'm looking at in gold is around the uh, 13. Uh, 35 level, uh, and uh, if we get below, if we get get below the 1650 um, level today, uh, you know that distance is not very far. That's only 15 dollars, and gold will move 30 or 40 dollars very, very quickly. So we have to be able to prepare ourselves that. Now the, the thing that I'm, and I am uh, long term on bullish gold, but today I'm asking myself, you know, why isn't gold, you know, showing at least some type of strength when it's looking at, uh, you know, the rest of the market is you know, right at the spot where it should be, uh, you know, rallying, because we've got silver uh, up on the day, we've got platinum up on the day, and yet we cannot get the uh, get the market moving, you know, in our favor. So we'll wait and we'll just wait and see what happens with the gold. But so far, it is holding uh, the lows that we made uh, last night, and we'll we'll know more about that, you know, as we come up. We've got to take a little break here. When we come back, it's eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. 
If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile.com in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I had a request to put the chart up for the Dow E-mini futures because that mimics what the Dow Jones is doing. And as you can see, we're making a perfect 61% retracement off the high we made back in August. Uh, now, remember, the S&P is making a 786 retracement at the 1688 level. So it's within about two points uh, of that level in the S&P. We've just made it in the Dow Jones. That doesn't mean it's going to stop here. It just means that these are very important numbers to be watching. And if you decide this is where you want to be going short, you certainly don't have to be risking much from this level. I would think about 30, 30 Dow points and probably five points in the S&P would be uh, would be all I would be uh, watching uh, at that time. Now I want to switch gears here uh, for a minute because we've got a market that is uh, really f fighting for its life, and of course we think uh, it's already you know given up the ghost. But the uh, the U.S. Treasury bond market, the 30-year bond, uh, has completed a three-drive pattern over the past month down at the uh, 128 level, 
and uh, we've had a, a rally of a, you know rallied up to about the 130 level, and we've uh, we've come down and uh, we're testing the 786 level uh, in the uh, Dow <laughs> in the 30-year uh, Treasury bonds, and if we go below the 128 level. This is going to be, uh, you know, extremely bearish because uh, it's breaking down with no rally uh, over the past five days. So it's it's really fighting for its life here. It's very very oversold. Uh, it needs to be. Uh, it, it, it just because it needs to have a rally doesn't mean it's going to get one. But it is certainly in the oversold camp. Uh, you know, we were down, you know, quite a few points. This thing topped at the one in the one mid one fifties level. And now we're down in the 128 level, so you can see that this thing has been in a bear market uh, for quite some time, and we believe it's going to stay that way for quite a few years. Uh, that 30-year bull market that we've had in interest rates, uh, you know, is pretty much uh, a history, uh, in in my opinion. So we'll have to wait and see. So the the key figure to watch in this 30-year Treasury bond is the 128 level. If we get below that, uh, that's selling us interest rates are going to keep spiking. And uh, you know we've got the 30-year, uh, or the 30-year mortgages are now uh, substantially above 4%. Just a few weeks ago they were at 3.25. So you know it's uh, it's a big difference. So we'll we'll see if this is going to happen. But it is a perfect uh, three-drive pattern. It's got all the symmetry that you want. The ABCD is there, and it stopped exactly at the expansion numbers that we watch. And so this should be very interesting to see, you know, if it's going to uh, if it's going to hold that level or not, because these are the these are the things that determine the the, the interest rates of the things that we have. I wanted to uh, just to show you uh, on a uh, longer term because we've looked at this head and shoulders pattern uh, many times before. In the uh, oh, I've got to change one little thing here so that this thing will come up and show you the fact that we've had these. These terrible rallies, uh, you know, going are not terrible, but very, very weak rallies going on in the interest rate market for a long time. And if we take a look at the uh, long-term uh, note chart, the, the, which are the shorter term paper, you know, 10 years and under, between 5 and 10 years, you'll see that, you know, we've broken down badly also. And we're trying to hold this level that we made last week uh, as a potential for a, a rally to occur. Uh, whether it will occur or not, you know, it remains to be seen. But uh, it is certainly oversold by any stretch of the imagination. That's the the bottom line of what we're what we're watching uh, in the notes and also the bonds. These are uh, very important markets because they, uh, you know, they represent about five or six times minimum of what we trade in stocks. Uh, the bond market is you you know very very huge. And uh, it is, uh, you know, already turned down, and it's a question of if we get a rally, and how much we're going to get, because that would be your last chance to get on the train, because uh, this market's really starting to accelerate to the downside. But from this level right here, I can't recommend being short, because it's just so doggone oversold. I mean, that's just, uh, you know, the bottom line of, uh, you know, what you're what you're watching, and I don't think that there's much else you can do. Uh, you know, for that, so we'll we'll wait and see if it's going to be uh, if it's going to be uh, you know something to to you know, to look at. I I you know like I say that what I <laughs> I I should take some medication. Uh, what I said this morning, I think the best trade to look at was the euro uh, selling it up at that 130, uh, 315 level. It's called it's came off about 20 pips. Uh, from that level, but uh, we'll see if it uh, is going to, you know, make a top today or not. We'll have to uh, have to wait and see to the end of the day of what's going on. Uh, one other person asked me a question about uh, Tesla, and uh, I I don't trade stocks very often at all, but the uh, they had a question about the stock, and I wanted to uh, bring it up and show you because it has all of the same characteristics that we had. Uh, in Apple, when Apple was making the high, and if you remember, you know uh, Elon Musk has been on the uh, tube for uh, for quite a while now. Uh, you know, talking about this. The reason why I'm bringing Tesla up is, a uh, fact is, I saw two Teslas here in, in Tucson this week. I saw one yesterday, and I saw one on Sunday. I'd never seen the cars before. They look like Jaguars uh, a little bit, but uh, they're they're very attractive cars. Um, I don't know much about them other than that. I uh, 
I I was a big fan of Nikola Tesla for sure, but I don't know anything about the automobiles. Okay, looking at Tesla stock, the thing that I think is important here from a technician's, and if, if you like technical analysis, this would be a good thing to look at. From the high that we made in July on the 15th to the high we made uh, a month later in August, that number from high to high is exactly what happened when we went from August to September. Those highs were exactly symmetrical. This was the, the concept that W.T. Gann talked about, which were you have time and price coming together at the same time. And uh, that formed a three-drive uh, pattern up there. We've broken down in what we did yesterday. Uh, we had a little bit of a rally today. We made a 61% retracement of the high. So uh, this is the same thing that happened to Apple when it was at 703. Now, whether it's going to be the same type of thing, I don't know. Uh, you know, but this is uh, this is something that you that you look at, and believe me, the stock has gone from almost nothing, you know, to one hundred and seventy dollars a share, and so um, you have to be uh, thinking that somewhere in here there it might have a little bit of a correction, but well, you know, history will tell us if that's going to be the case. But what I wanted to show here was the fact that you had a beautiful high there that matched up very nicely. If you were to go a little bit further and look at the June to July high and took a point six one eight of that high distance, that would be the same numbers that we're looking at in July and August. In other words, each of the highs are related in time by using the relationship of point six one eight or point seven eight six. And sometimes of course they expand. That's why we only look at four ratios, six one eight, seven eight six, one point two seven and one point six one eight. To me that is enough to describe just about anything you want to be looking at, you know, in the market as far as uh, a place for the market to, uh, you know, make a move uh, either down or up. Because time is is very very elusive. That's the hardest part of technical analysis. Uh, because we trade in price, which is good. That's what's on our equity run, and that's how we put our stops in. We're able to manage the risk. But looking at time, it's a very very difficult thing to look at. And uh, believe me, that's one of the problems that you have in astrology is you're only looking at, you know, things that are, you know, basically just probabilities. And even though they are strong probabilities, you know, better than 70%, that doesn't mean they're, uh, you know, they work all the time. That means they're going to, you know, fail 30% of the time. And so that's, uh, that's an important fact to remember. So keep an eye on Tesla. Uh, if we get above uh, the 175 level in Tesla, you know, that would be something that uh, you would tell us that we're probably going to go a lot higher. But all the things are there. Uh, you have uh, Elon Musk on the tube all the, the week or so ago. Uh, he had all kinds of free advertising uh, about the car and all the things he was doing with his, his uh, uh, train that he wants to build between San Francisco and Los Angeles. All of that, of course, would be, you know, uh, very uh, important also. But he's getting the press. You know, just like, uh, you know, Mr. Jobs did when the stock was, uh, you know, up there. And I I don't remember if Mr. Jobs was still alive after the stock hit $700. I can't remember when he passed away. I, I, I think he was still alive, but I'm not sure. But he was sure getting a lot of press. And that's free press because that, that, that it's very, very expensive to get, uh, you know, anything on CNBC. It's just, uh, you know, very, very difficult to get. Uh, advertising unless you want to pay for it and it's very very expensive that's the that's the bottom line now some <laughs> someone someone just uh, dropped me a message and asked me if I was still bearish the market in, on a long term basis and the answer for that is yes because what I look at is I look at the the, the uh, New York Stock Exchange index and that to me is uh, telling us that we have made a uh, a big a bearish top here uh, uh, a five-point reverse wave top, and then we've also, uh, I'll, I'll get this thing posted into uh, the Tiger TV for just a second because I have to update it to make sure that I'm looking at the right numbers because we are right at, uh, we've gone above the 786 in the um, the New York Stock Exchange Index, so it's even more bullish, uh, more bullish than the Dow Jones Industrial Average, so it's still not out of the woods yet, but I don't believe we're going to get much above the May highs uh, if, in fact, we do. Uh, there's a possibility, of course, that we can do that, but we'll we'll just have to wait and see if uh, if that's going to uh, if that's going to happen uh, or not. 
Okay, now, I had one other question that someone asked me, and that was, was about how do you handle, uh, you know, when you're looking at pattern recognition, and sometimes I'll be looking at an hourly chart, and sometimes I'll be looking at a daily chart. What I do when I set up a trade, I usually look at the daily chart first, then I go to the 60-minute chart, and if the pattern is still uh, very clear, then what I'll do is I'll go down to a 15-minute or a 5-minute chart, to try to massage my entry to get to as close to the D point, which is where I usually like to enter when we have the ABCD, is to get as close to the D point as I possibly can. Now, two factors will prevent me from, uh, you know, entering. And that one is if there's a big gap there, like in Apple. I couldn't buy Apple today except for a day trade. I could look at it on intraday and certainly find a place to buy it. But for a longer-term position, I can't buy it with that huge gap down. The other thing is, is when we have these really wide-ranging bars, you know, long-ranging bars, a bar, a long-ranging bar is a bar that's three times normal, then that's telling you that you don't have to stand in front of that. Don't try to catch a, a, a falling knife. Let it stick to the ground and then pick it up. You know, you don't really have to, you know, to be a, a you know, a hero to, to do some of these things. So that's, uh, you know, that's the bottom line, what you're trying to do. You try to set it up so that you have uh, at least three ratios coming together. That would give you a Gartley pattern or a three-drive pattern or the butterfly pattern. They automatically have those ratios built right in to the uh, thing. So that's the, you know, the main thing that, uh, that you're looking at when you're watching the, uh, uh, you know, the, the patterns unfold. The one that we're looking at in the Euro, it might not work, but it's an ideal pattern because it has all the things necessary you know, to make it work. You had a 61% retracement uh, on the uh, on the shorter term hourly charts. Uh, on the daily charts, you've made a five point reverse wave uh, up at that 134.50 level. And so you're you're right at the moment of truth here, uh, you know, to see whether it's going to be, uh, you know, a good trade or not. But, you know, like I say, it's just, just, just probabilities. You don't know which ones are going to work and which ones are not going to work. It's just not going to be... Uh, an area. Uh, someone asked if I had an order to sell, and no, I don't have an order to sell anymore because it had already hit the price. Uh, the number I was looking at was the uh, 133.13, and we got to 133.15, and uh, so that fulfilled that objective. And all I do is I put a 30 pip stop, which is uh, you know roughly $360. And a pip means you know percentage and price. That's all it means when they're talking about forex. That's their way of talking about ticks. And, you know, tick is nothing more than the minimum value that we have. Years ago, uh, when I first started trading, you know, in the stock market, everything was quarter half. They didn't even trade in eighths. It was quarter and half, quarter and half, quarter and half. And, uh, you know, then then in the early, late 90s, uh, you know, they became, uh, they went decimal. And that really, uh, really hurt a lot of the floor people because they were making a fortune off the spreads between the bid and ask. Now with the decimals, there's just nothing that they can do to massage it. And that's why we have this high frequency trading is because these uh, executions can be so quick and the amount of money that you can make in a few cents can be very, very, uh, you know, very, very strong. Um, the My feeling on uh, this automated trading and high frequency trading, I think it's a good thing myself. I don't think there's any problem with it. You're just, you, know, you're just, you have an opinion of what's going to happen. They have an opinion that they built on their models of what's going to happen, and you know let the best let the best person win. What scares me the most, folks, and I mentioned this earlier, and the thing is the cyber terrorism that that we're probably going to get get hit with in the financial markets, and not just the financial markets. It's probably going to get hit on our transportation and and other things too, because these people are very very smart and they're very very um, insidious on what they want to do. And believe me, if they can shut down the computers, that's that's going to be a really bad thing. And I don't believe there's such a thing as a fail-safe computer anymore, folks. Okay, we've got to take a little break. 877-927-6648. On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, 
Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.6% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. And all six of those winning trades had been initiated no earlier than just the previous month. With the 600th weekly Gold Report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began, and right now you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market provides trading opportunities after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is having an open house in the Tiger's Den for two weeks, and the best part is that everyone is invited and you just have to be a member at TFNN. The open house in the Tiger's Den has already begun and will last through our week-long virtual trading competition, which ends September 13th. Use this time to exchange trading ideas with other traders in the virtual chat room and to discuss trading strategy. For all the information and to take part in the Tiger's Den open house, log on to TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different futures contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now you can receive a two-week free trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I've posted into Tiger TV the volatility index chart because uh, we have, uh, we're making a 61% retracement of the move from July through September. Uh, you know, it's coming in right where we're trading right now at 1401, and whether that holds or not. This, this, all I can say is that we're at such a critical level because the Dow Jones is at the 61% retracement of the move. Uh, the S&P 500 is at the uh, 786 level within a point or so. And, of course, the New York Stock Exchange Index is above it by just, uh, you know, less than a half a percent. So 
we are at a very critical level uh, in the in the markets uh, at, at where we stand now. The market that I the, the two markets that I think are that are the most critical are the gold markets and the and the bond market because both of those could you know easily uh, move a lot lower. Uh, but the but the most important one of them all, of course, is the euro at this 133.15 level. And if we get above the 134.40 level, that means the U.S. dollar is going to be under uh, a really uh, big uh, attack, and we're probably looking at 136 to 137 in the euro without uh, without any trouble at all. And that wouldn't surprise me. It uh, these markets are moving, you know, uh, very very rapidly sometimes. And a counter to what the news uh, happens to be, so we'll we'll see. Uh, someone asked me a question about, uh, you know, what I think of, uh, you know, the thing in Syria. You know, frankly, the uh, we didn't do anything about it when it first happened, which was probably a good thing because no one knows for sure what really happened. We knew that the West, we found out later that the we- weapons of mass destruction, you know, were not in uh, Iraq like like that like they thought. And so, uh, you know, we'll see if uh, this is going to be the case uh, in Syria, uh, you know, because uh, you just can't have things like this happening, though, because uh, if, they, if they're testing them over there, it won't be long until they're going to be trying to do it in either Tel Aviv or New York or, or Tokyo or someplace like that, because this is what they're going to be trying to, uh, you know, manipulate the you know, economies and stuff and, and, and governments, because this is, uh, they, they don't call them wep- weapons of mass destruction for no reason, folks. These are really, really bad things, uh, and we don't want to uh, have to live through stuff like that. It's bad enough going through something like 9-11. Can you imagine what it would be like with a you know, gas attack or something like that? But my, my problem is I feel it's going to be a cyber attack, and that's going to be the the way that it's going to happen, but you know, that's my opinion. And you know, opinions are uh, there. Everybody has one. That's all I can all I can say with that. The key the key things to watch today are the euro in this one thirty three fifteen level. It's very very critical at this level. Uh, the British pound in the one fifty eight level uh, is very important. Uh, the dollar index at the eighty one fifty level is uh, is in, in, in very very important because this is money moving around, and this will be the thing that could you know fuel a, a bigger move because if you know if the dollar is going to weaken, it allows people to buy stocks at a cheaper price. Uh, you know foreigners do because dollars are cheaper, and that could push the stock market up even higher. Whether that will happen or not, you know. We'll We'll see, uh, you know, history will tell us if that's going to be the case or not. Tomorrow, we've got uh, Rich Anderson on the show because we've got a lot of commodity things uh, going on. We've got the big crop report due. That's the that's the last crop report uh, of the year uh, because we're, we're getting ready for harvesting now starting in October. And most of the crops are finished, so we'll see if, uh, you know, we're there uh, at that point. We're very, very close to that uh, 786 level. In the S&P 500, uh, at that uh, 1688 level, that's also something very critical. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, my friends, and may God bless. And thank you for your prayers for my grandson, who's doing well. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past.